through Joe, I got involved in trying to give a Wyoming perspective. And actually, uh, you know, I was a freshman in uh, the University of Wyoming, in 64, in, in Hill, or in Crane Hall, in the spring, in January or February, 64, when the Beatles were on. Um, Ed Sullivan. And the next month, I got the first Beatles album for my birthday. And right about that time, this is uh, the branding iron, February 21st, 1964. Uh, there, apparently at that time they had an annual tour of uh, UW students that were talented that would go around the state. This guy uh, on the left, his name's Steve Carlson. He was from Cheyenne, he was a good musician and everything. He, eventually became uh, the top sidekick to Dick Clark in later years. And uh, he was actually, he played the pilot in the last episode of the Seinfeld show. But uh, he was the MC for this Wild Days tour, 64. And... Uh, Did he go to UW? Yeah, he was, he was, he graduated from UW, I think. But, uh, you know, back, I don't know, in the 80s or something, you'd see these uh, on the weekends or late at night, you'd see these ad uh, advertisements for Dick Clark's uh, compendium of various songs or something, and he would always be the sort of the MC of that. Anyway, um, one of the songs they did on this tour, according to this article, was... One act will include a takeoff on the Beatles, a singing group from England which has invaded the U.S. by storm. <laughs> to make the act complete, wigs have been ordered for the Y.O. Days act. The Beatles made their first U.S. television appearance uh, 12 days earlier. <laughs> this is Charles Seltonridge, professor of music, who uh, was the director of the UW band. And this is um, March 6th, 64. Uh, carried a picture of him at a, at a basketball game wearing a Beatles wig. Uh, and the, here's a whole article about, uh, about the Beatles. And it says in there, uh, <coughs> BI Society reporter Sharon, Sharon Wilmshin wrote the article about the four wailing Liverpudlians. <laughs> and she quoted a UW co-ed as saying the Fab Four's popularity was due to their haircuts and manner of dress. If they would have stayed in their black leather jackets, no one would have noticed them, she said. And of course, uh, in August 64, the Beatles were in Denver, appeared at Red Rocks. Uh, they stayed at the Brown Palace. I actually went down there, stood standing in front of the Brown Palace with the idea that the Beatles were going to come out and recognize everybody. But of course, that didn't ever happen. Uh, I don't know if any of you remember KIMN Radio 950 from from Denver. And uh, do you remember any of the DJs? Danny Davis. Danny Davis. I remember Pogo Pogue. Pogo Pogue. <laughs> and, uh, and they had Jay Mack, who, you know, he, he, he was constantly playing this little takeout that said, uh, over a dry goods store in Indianapolis, or I'm going to send you back to Ottawa, Ottawa. I don't know, it was just crazy. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> I don't know if any of you know that in 2009, WNET in New York produced a, a documentary entitled How the Beatles Rocked the Kremlin and the basic theme of this is that the Beatles were responsible for ending the Cold War uh, because uh, you know the Soviet Union banned all the Beatles music and so the, the young people over there they would go around and uh, take uh, transformers or whatever it is, amplifiers out of the phone booths, and they would use x-ray film, and they would 
copy these uh, bootleg albums that came in or smuggled in so that they could hear the, the Beatles and uh, you know, even some of the leaders are quoted on, uh, so the USSR leaders are quoted on this documentary as saying that that's how they learned English, uh, listening to these Beatles. Now this is a group of four African Americans who were students at UW. Uh, the one on the left is Jerry Marion. He was a very good football and baseball player for Wyoming. They formed a group this was in 64, in March. Um, and they had actually gone to Denver and recorded a song. I think the other three guys are track stars at UW. Um, anyway, they, they uh, Jerry Marion, the guy on the left, from uh, Bakersfield, California, uh, he said... He hoped the quartet's record would take off. Quote, now that the uniqueness of the Beatles has worn off, there is a place for something new. So, <laughs> that didn't quite work out. But uh, This guy, uh, Charles Thomas, one of these guys, uh, if you look at the track records in the east hallway of the field house, he is still, uh, his... Long jump of 25 feet, one and a half inches in 1965, still ranked second in the record books. The thing of, in 67, I, I looked in the branding iron and this afternoon I spent a couple hours up at the microfilm seeing if there was any mention of Sergeant Peppers in the fall of 67 and the, there wasn't that I could find. And that's because the UW football team went undefeated in the regular season in 67 and then went to the Sugar Bowl. Um, There's more important things to write about. <laughs> and at, at that time, just to give you an idea of the milieu, this is the kind of thing that was in the Branding Iron. This is a weekly column that tells, the Branding Iron only came out once a week. It tells who's lavalier to who, who's pinned to who, who's engaged to who, who's in, and, and who it got married to. Uh, that was a big, big news. This is during the season. Uh, I think actually I meant to put that in a different folder. Cowboy Joe. Here comes the horse. That used to be the... The cheer, I don't think they use that anymore for some reason. And here's a, one evidence of the Beatles. Uh, this, this was a column that was in every week in the Branding Iron by the Walrus, who I don't know who it is exactly, uh, really. But it, this whole column is about all the language that uh, is hip and I think he likes the language, but he's sort of making fun of it at the same time. And of course, in 67, they're arguing about what's still being argued about. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the Sugar Bowl, Wyoming led 13 to nothing at halftime against LSU, who had about twice as many players on the team. In the second half, it was, you know, it was rainy, muggy, and... Uh, Wyoming's depleted core kind of wore out and LSU came back to win 20 to 13. Well, thank you, Phil. That was, that was fantastic. You know, it's interesting.